Honorable Deputy Minister of Cooperative and Traditional Affairs, responsible for traditional affairs. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members, South Africans, good evening. Unfortunately, the sponsor or the proposer of the motion is not here. We are reliably informed that it's somewhere in the United States of America and probably consulting his brothers and sisters in the liberal group on the project they call the African Project, which was confirmed in a meeting between their former leader, Ellen Zille and Henry Kissinger, when he said, you are our beacon of hope on Africa UDA, simply because they won on a project of liberal agenda, which is anti majoritarian which is also about regime change. Good luck on him in those consultations. The African National Congress welcomes the debate on this matter arising off, out of the recent attendance of the President of the Republic of Sudan, His Excellency Omar al-Bashir, to the just held 25th summit of the African Union Heads of States and, uh, in, and Government in Johannesburg. We welcome the debate because probably engage it holds the possibility for our country to expand her horizon about the complexities of international law, the imperatives and the practice of foreign relations, and thereby invigorate policy, and more specifically the law. In this context, we know that the matter concerning President Bashir's attendance of the AU summit is currently before the courts, and as a consequence, there is a limit to the extent to which we, as parliamentarians, can debate the details. And we are, agree with you, the many South Africans who say is, let's respect the processes of the law. Bearing this fact in mind, the ANC is of the view that the debate we are having, or rather should have, is one about the challenges of achieving peace, justice and reconciliation on one hand, and the pursuit of international justice as represented by the International Criminal Court. And we want to reinstate the ANC noble policies of holding on to the human rights culture and the rule of law. And we do not, by any chance, promote any impunity. And we take the matters of what happened in Darfur with the 300,000 killed and over two and a half million people displaced. And indeed, those who have done it must still account. When he addressed the OAU meeting, of heads of states and government as president of the Democratic South Africa for the first time on the 13th of June 1994 in Tunisia, President Nelson Mandela said, among other things, and I quote, finally, at this summit meeting in Tunis, we shall remove our agenda, the consideration of the question of apartheid South Africa. Where South Africa appears on the agenda again, it will be because we want to discuss what its contribution shall be to the making of the new African Renaissance. Let it be because we want to discuss what materials it will supply for the rebuilding of the African city of Carthage. One epoch with its, this, with its historic task has come to an end. Surely another commences with its own challenges. Africa cries out for a new birth. Carthage awaits the restoration of its glory. Close quote. The ANC enters the debate informed by the consideration and commitment President Mandela made to the OEU in 1994. In particular, we are said, one, South Africa has national interests which must at all times defend and pursue within the context of international solidarity and the renewal of Africa in its, all its elements. Two, South Africa has an obligation to strengthen the continent's intergovernmental organizations and to contribute to the reform of institutions of global governance. Three, diplomacy has established norms and conventions which cannot be ignored, lest we promulgate untenable precedences which may serve to defeat other valued objectives in the diplomatic and political realms. And lastly, we remain committed to the rule of law human rights in their broad sense, as captured in the Constitution of the Republic, and as Resolution 42 of the Mangaung ANC National Conference stated, we condone impunity, authoritarian, and violent regimes. In, 
In its 2009 report, the AU High Level Panel on Darfur, chaired by former President Tawumbeki, described the nature of the Darfur, Darfurian conflict as Sudanese crisis in Darfur. For its part, the Eastern Sudan, Sudan Peace Agreement recognizes in its preamble that political, social, and economic marginalization constitutes the core problem in Eastern, Sadu, uh, in, in, in Eastern Sudan. This serves to give the lie to the commonly advanced platitude that it is often advanced about the primary contradiction of Sudan's and the Darfur, conflict as one between Africans on the other hand and Arabs on the other. In the Sudanese context, as, as, as well as with elsewhere on the continent, the descriptions African and Arab are but notion, national appellations of identity any more than they are genetic. The ANC believes that our country should continue to support the African Union's honest and sustained efforts at finding peaceful solutions to South Sudan's conflicts and efforts towards democratization. We know that our, while over and above what is, has already been done, the AU is continuing to mediate between the parties to the whole in Blue, Line, Blue Nile, South Kordov, and Darfur states. Sudan will also soon convene a national dialogue to discuss questions of democratization, the economy, the national identity, and the international relations. For these processes to succeed, President Bashir is, like FW Dittleck, during our processes of negotiations in this country, one of the critical players. The Sudanese people therefore need him in Khartoum and not in The Hague. Sudan shares borders with seven African countries amongst them, Central African Republic, South Sudan and Libya, which faces peace and security and challenges. It is obvious therefore that if something went wrong in Sudan, it will not only affect Sudan, but it will also affect the larger part of the neighborhood and serves to exacerbate already existing peace and security challenges in the region. Peace is important for the continent. The matters of justice can only work where there is peace. Chairperson, on on, I refer to the uh, uh, African Union uh, report, which investigated how best to address the issues of accountability and combating impunity on the one hand and peace, healing and reconciliation on the other. I therefore want to state here that President al-Bashir was invited to the AU by the AU. He was not visiting South Africa. He was not on a state visit here. He had attended a meeting that is constituted by an act of the African Union, which was being hosted in South Africa. In the 70 years of the existence of the UN, the USA has never attempted to arrest any leader and they were serious and notorious dictators even at the time, but they were not, not a hand in any of them because the law of impunity, the, the law of humanity, sorry, immunity, the law of immunity is the law that was agreed in 1961 that all, all countries agreed to at Vienna that this law must be allowed because we are now living in a world that must reach consensus. Even if you hate some, you have to meet with them in order to seek solutions. So therefore, the meeting of the AU had immunity, which was not challenged by anybody for 10 days. That was published and no one objected to it until when he had arrived in the country. So we are not going to be using the AU, therefore, to be the platform where we arrest leaders. That will never happen, such as the UN was never used to arrest any leader. However, we are then saying that the issues in Darfur are serious, and we agree with you. However, don't use the EU, because the day it happens, it means there's the death of the EU. The day it happens within the UN, it means the UN will never gather again, because leaders will be afraid to go there, because they will be arrested. And we don't want such to, to be created anywhere in the world, so that we can then pursue the matters that are raised, and then that is why we say we'll then follow it up. However, this is what, what we are standing for. This therefore cannot be done using the AU and any one of our intergovernmental organizations as a near to arrest leaders who attend meetings and submits. Most importantly in this regard and, and in this reference to our cause, the demand that South Africa must have arrested 
President Bashir, while he's attending the AU sub summit, illustrated the contempt that some hold on Africa and Africans. The demand is never made of the UN, the US government, which also called on us to cooperate with the IEC, and yet the US is not even acceding to the IEC itself. And therefore, as African National Congress, will want to make the following pronouncement that we call on the reform of the ICC. We went in voluntarily. The option of going out voluntarily still is open because all countries are not forced to be in the IEC. So South Africa went in there when we assigned the protocol in 1998 and when we exceeded the instrument in 2003 because we wanted to lead and we thought everybody will follow, but not everybody followed. And as a result, the ICC is losing its direction, its credibility, it's been undermined because not everybody wants to go into it. Secondly, we are calling on the United Nations Security Council to no longer have powers of in referring matters to the ICC. Because in it, seed countries are refusing to exit to the instrument, but they've got the power to say so and so must go. And when it's about them, they then veto. So therefore, it's not an fair instrument. Therefore, we say the Rome Statute must therefore begin to reform on that. Until everybody in the UN Security Council is a member, then we can allow them then to can go into it. So that reform we call. Second reform, that we need to remove the article that's volunteer to go in. If all countries can go in, and we must replace it and say all must be in the ICC, then it will become an objective and instrument that we need. But so long as it's just a volunteer, others going in and others not going in, therefore it will lose uh, its credibility. And we are therefore calling for that particular reform that all must go in. And therefore the ANC re reserve the right to raise some of these particular reform packages, present them, and at the particular point, if they are rejected, will have no other option and review our membership of the IEC, ICC. And we thank you very much on that one.